truth crushed to earth shall rise again. The eternal years of God are hers, but error wounded rise with pain and dies among his worshipers. William Cullen Bryant. I'm Stephen Middleton, coming to you from the Possibility Action Network. Our core values include, I am, I can, and I will. I am Possibility Man. Today, I want to share on the theme, the footprints in my community are gone. But first, a reminder, we will migrate to be alerted to our content. Check us out on YouTube. You'll find a link to my YouTube channel at the bottom of this video. So check us out. Now back to our share, the footprints in my community are gone. I want to use this phrase as a metaphor. And let me share with you what I mean by metaphor. If you check out the dictionary diction, dic, uh, definition of metaphor, you'll find that a metaphor is a figure of speech that's symbolic of an abstract idea. So a metaphor allows you to look at another idea by way of contrast. Another way to look at it is a metaphor is a figure of speech containing an implied comparison. So we're looking at two things, but we're really using the metaphor to illustrate that thing. A third way of seeing this is, while a metaphor can be true, it is figurative language intended to convey a different meaning than a literal meaning of a word or phrase. So as we ponder this together then, let's think of some things that I may consider to be a metaphor. For example, uh, one apple can spoil, spoil the whole bunch. You know, that, that's a metaphor to get you to look at one person maybe corrupting a whole group of individuals. Another way of seeing a metaphor is something like, when the cat's away, the mice will play to show you that, you know, that if, 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 if a parent or a teacher or a boss is not on the scene, that the children or employee, etc., may misbehave. So we want to use then the footprints in my community are gone as a metaphor to illustrate an idea. Let me tell you a story about my community when growing up in Cross, South Carolina. There were footpaths in my community. There was a house that was located behind our house. And over time, because people went back and forth, a footpath grew up there. All of the grass were gone. All of the weeds were gone. We could actually look down as we walked and see nothing but dirt. But that's not the way it started. When it started, we had to push brushes aside. There might have been limbs in the area where we were going to walk. We had to pick those limbs up and move them away. But as we communicated back and forth with our neighbor, a footpath developed. Now, this footpath is also an illustration of a relationship between neighbors because we went back and forth. If my mama needed lard, for example, oil, Halard is what we called it back in the day. She would say, go to such and such a house and ask her to send me some lard. And we would walk that trail, that footpath, to get lard for my mama. My neighbor's uh, children may be told, go to such and such a house and ask her to give me a slice of bacon. And those children would walk those paths. And over time, those, those, that, that, that walking will build a path where we could see just dirt on the ground. 
all of the debris had been cleared away. There was another neighbor who lived farther away, and my mama would say, go to such and such a house and help her with this particular chore. And we would walk that trail, that distance, that was the shortest distance between our house and the location of our neighbor. And all over my community in Cross, South Carolina, you would find footpaths as neighbors walked communicating with their neighbors. Now, during this time of footpaths, the relationship with his neighbors was strong. All of the children knew each other. All of the children knew the adults that were, that were in those homes. All of the children knew that if they misbehaved, that that neighbor could speak to them just as their parents did because of the relationship we had by walking those footpaths. Now, what do those footpaths paths tell me? What am I using it as, as a metaphor for at this time? Of course, we can say that it's about relationships. That's one thing. But I want to look at three areas where these footpaths are instructive to me as I use it as a metaphor. The first is when we are learning something new. For example, pick any child who wants to, let's say, play a musical instrument, or any adult who wants to learn a new language, or a graduate student who is in a, in a seminar for the first time, or a medical student who is looking at surgery for the first time, or a law student seeking to pass the, LSAT, uh, the, the bar examination so that he or she would be eligible to practice law in his or her state. What if these individuals then popped up one day, made an effort to, to take the bar examination, made an effort to perform open heart surgery, made an effort to play a musical instrument like the piano, and all of a sudden just stopped after the first few sessions? What does that tell us? It tells us that if you consider my metaphor, the footpaths in my community are gone it simply means that the person hasn't spent enough time with the subject. And I am not simply referring now to school children, like first graders or seventh graders or high schoolers. I'm taking this into graduate school and into professions, or even someone who says, I want to become a writer. Lest someone says, I want to be a writer, and they spend one month plying their trade. And after one month, they said, oh, this is too hard. I don't want to do it. I do not have talent in that area. My metaphor says that the footpaths in my community are gone. So the more time an individual spends on a subject that, that's right for them, more likely than not, they will become better and better. Another area that occurs to me is, you know, let's say that we have poor habits of thought. Let's say that we have a habit of continually telling ourselves, I am not good enough. I cannot do such and such a thing. You know, I cannot go to school because I am that smart. You know, I remember, and I don't mind sharing this with anyone, when I first went to college, I went to college with the single ambition of becoming a lawyer. Now, of course, law was not the best profession for me. I'm happy that I chose something else. But one of the things that I told myself was, oh, I can't become a lawyer. You know, I'm not sure if I'm confident speaking before a judge in court. I'm not sure if I have the talent to apply that trade. And I did not pursue law as a career. What I did discover, though, in graduate school to take myself off the hook is that I can merge history and law. And I did become a legal historian with, of course, formal law training under my belt. But here's my point. My point is that the habits of thought are the same way. The footpaths in my community are gone. And let's suppose that an individual then has developed the habit of just thinking of themselves in limiting ways. Thinking of themselves, I can't do that. I don't have the right, you know, I didn't go to the right school. I didn't grow up in the right family. I didn't have the right upbringing. All of those things are merely habit of thoughts. And remember my metaphor is that the footpaths in my community are gone. And if you continue thinking those thoughts, then of course, you'll continue getting the results that you're getting. I'll talk about what we can do with this in a moment. 
Here's a third example where this metaphor resonates with me. Stepping out in a new venture. Someone may say, you know, I've never done this that before. For example, I am doing uh, live videos. My intention is to build up my community on YouTube. My intention is to launch my podcast and have guests on it. My intention is to occasionally come out on Facebook and share some of those podcasts and my guests with my community on Facebook. But I have never done it before. Now, I can use that to say, oh, I've never done it before. I cannot do this. I'm not good enough. You know, I am not with Mr. Miles, or I am not with Les Brown, or, you know, I'm not Eckhart Tolle. You know, I am not Sidney Banks. You know, I can use all of these excuses and tell myself those things over and over again. And those things will become my truth. I started by quoting the poet William Cullen Bryant. Bryant said, truth crushed to earth shall rise again. That is the truth. And so there is something that's true about you. There's not nothing that's, that will become true about you. There's something that's true about me. There's something that's true about us right now. And here it is. We have the right stuff. If there is something that's planted in your heart, you have the capacity to do it now. You simply need to step out there and ply your trade. And that's my message to you today. The footpaths in my community are gone, as a metaphor. As you walk that footpath back and forth and back and forth, that path will become nothing but dirt. If you have developed the negative habit to believe that you can't do it, that habit of thought will become as if it's real. But Sidney Banks tells us that it's not. That is just a thought. So what do you do with limiting beliefs, limiting thinking? Do nothing about them. Don't try to stop them. Don't try to control them. Don't try to manage them. Don't try to psych yourself up. Just be aware that they're just thoughts. That's what Sidney Banks said. That's what a generation of his students are sharing. That's what professional coaches and transformational coaches all around the world are saying, that you don't need to do anything about a negative thought that comes into your head. Just realize, oh, that's just a thought. It's just one of those thought things. And then put your sight on what you want. Truth crushed to earth shall rise again. Here's one last thing. In every spiritual leader, where there was a prophet that really changed the world, I'm talking about a Muhammad, a Buddha, or a Jesus, say this. And Jesus said it best. He said, the works that I do, you shall do also, but greater works. So you have the right stuff. I'm Stephen Middleton, coming to you from the Possibility Action Network. Our core values include, I am, I can, and I will. I am Possibility Man. Until next time, good day.